Hi, I'm Em from Broadway Best Friend, and today I'm predicting the Tony Awards 2025, specifically the category of leading actress in a musical. These are my predictions for who is going to be nominated in this category. I have three locks right now, and then two slots where I've been switching people back and forth, so I'm gonna go through my three locks and then tell you who I've been switching out those last two slots. At number one, I have Audra McDonald for Gypsy. After I saw Sunset Boulevard in October, I had Nicole at my number one, but after Nicole's Instagram fiasco, where she commented on Russell Brand's Instagram right after the election. I'm moving her into number two as much as it was a stunning performance. At this point in time, I'm filming this at the end of November. I don't think the Broadway community has moved on from that, which includes Tony voters, meaning I moved Nicole Scherzinger for Sunset Boulevard into number two. Audra at one, Nicole at number two. Gypsy has just started previews. It seems from early reactions that people are going either way on Audra's performance. They're being specific about Audra's voice and how she's singing the iconic songs in more of a mix as opposed to a belt, which could be negative, could be positive, could be neutral. I also saw someone compare this Gypsy revival to the 2017 Hello Dolly revival, where it was a regal revival of a classic musical and the main reason for reviving it is the star. So is it going to be like in the 2018 Tony Awards where Bette Midler won for the Hello Dolly revival? I could see that happening, especially with how beloved Audra is in the Broadway community and how beloved this musical and this role is in the Broadway canon. Gypsy officially opens on December 19th, so we'll get a better idea of of how critics and reviewers are seeing Audra's performance. At this point in time though, it's seeming like Audra has the edge because of Nicole. Moving into number two, I have Nicole Scherzinger. Her performance is phenomenal in Sunset, which is a phenomenal production. Maybe it would go Sunset winning revival, but Audra winning leading actress. Nicole's performance was unforgettable. I felt like I was taking up space with the Broadway legend in front of my eyes. Whenever people describe Broadway legendary performance of the past, when I was watching Nicole in Sunset, which I have now seen two times, both times Nicole is just such a consistent power house in the role and she is synonymous with this production. That being said, after the Instagram comments, people have been rallying around her standby, Mandy Gonzalez, so maybe we'll see a narrative continue throughout the rest of this season into Tony voting of maybe Nicole's not so synonymous with this production if people are harboring on the standbys. And then same going back to Gypsy. Depending on how reviews are for this production, how is this production going to do financially? I'm assuming it'll stay open through the Tonys, but is it going to be as buzzy and fresh and the story of the season, the hit of the season regarding musical revival? or is it really going to be the sunset show regarding what was the musical revival of the season? Kind of similar to how last year we had Merrily vs. Cabaret, where Merrily ended up being the runaway financial and critical hit, whereas Cabaret, despite doing well, came away empty-handed Tony-wise for the performance awards, that is, and for the big musical revival category. So I'm sticking with Audra at one at this point, Nicole at two. All eyes are on these Gypsy reviews for December 19th, which will be the last show opening before the new year. Moving into number three, I have Megan Hilty for Death Becomes Her. Megan Hilty is leading Death Becomes Her. This was a phenomenal, hilarious musical comedy that I saw in previews. It opened to positive reviews as well. I think this one is exceeding people's expectations. It my expectations. Megan Hilty is definitely a lead. She is a true comedy powerhouse and musical theater singing powerhouse, which we knew this from Smash, but seeing her in this high stamina role of Death Becomes Her, we had the physical comedy, we had the verbal comedy, and then we had so many solos, and it's a very vocally demanding role as well. There was never a lull in her performance. Whenever she was on stage, she was who you were looking at. But despite me having her at number five or even on the outs of this category when I made my early Tony predictions over the summer, because this was a musical comedy. I take it back. I'm writing that wrong. That we are not underestimating this musical comedy. This is a legit musical with legit sets with legit Tony chances at the best musical award and Megan is coming along with this Tony nomination lock for leading actress in a musical. She's the reason I saw this musical and she's the one I've been thinking about since leaving the musical. Those are my three locks. I have Audra, Nicole, and Megan. Now I'm going to talk through who I'm thinking about for that fourth and fifth slot and by the end of the video I'll commit to who I'm putting in my fourth and fifth slot. The first person I'm considering here is Jennifer Simard for Death Becomes Her. I remember thinking going into it that I was seeing it for Megan Hilty and that Jennifer Simard would probably feel more like featured. Nope. They are absolutely co-leads. I was impressed with the creative team on multiple fronts for Death Becomes Her, but with what they did for the character of Helen, who Jennifer Simard plays, I was really impressed with how much they made her a co-lead. You would not have the quick biting comedy and all of those accolades I just gave about Megan without Jennifer. 
because they're going back and forth at each other. I think act two, Jennifer especially gets to shine. And despite me going in for Megan, I came out rooting for both Megan and Jennifer. And leaving the theater, I was thinking like, okay, would they nominate both Megan and Jennifer for this musical comedy? Now that we've had it confirmed from critics, this is doing well. I'm assuming it's going to be doing financially well and make it till June as in staying open till June, despite it being an expensive production to run. What I'm saying is, yes, I think there will be room for Jennifer and Megan because we don't have the success of this musical if not for strong leads on both fronts of the Madeline character and Helen character. I'm putting Jennifer at number four. Let's see. Once we have the spring musicals open, we'll see if Jennifer gets edged out. But right now, Death Becomes Her just had positive reviews, just had their performance at the Macy's Parade. Let's see if that momentum continues into the 2025 part of this season and continues to stand out among some of these other new musicals that are going to be opening. I'm putting Jennifer in there with Megan. We don't have a successful musical without both of them. I was really impressed with Helen's character and how both of them stuck with me. Another component of Jennifer Samard, she has two Tony nominations for both Disaster and Company. The Tony Committee likes her. After seeing the show, I think the Tony Committee will have Megan and Jennifer as lead. They'll have Michelle Williams in featured when they're making their distinctions for what category it's going to be. I think this will be Jennifer's first lead nomination and I think Death Becomes Her is going to keep momentum the whole time for both of these women to get in. And while we're talking about previous nominations, Megan Hilty was previously nominated for a Tony for Noises Off, which was a play, not a musical. This is Nicole's Broadway debut, so she's never been nominated for a Tony. And then Audrey McDonald has been nominated for a Tony 10 times and she's won six times. So I'm putting Jennifer Smart in at number four. Let's get these co-leads both nominated for this category, despite it being a crowded category. Okay, if we're putting both Death Becomes Her women in, that leaves one more slot. Here's who I'm thinking for the slot. Adina Menzel could be here at number five. Her new musical Redwood is starting previews in January. I'm not confident she's going to get in. Despite her stature in the Broadway community, the show Redwood, which previously played in California last year, it got pretty mediocre, tepid reviews. So unless there's been improvements done, I'm not convinced that the show is going to be critically well received or do well financially with audiences. Considering new musicals already have a tough time staying open on Broadway, for a long amount of time. Adina's name will help it with ticket sales to possibly stay open till the Tonys, but if it's not doing well critically, I could see the Tonys going with someone else, possibly somebody where it's her first nomination. That being said, I'm thinking about If Then in 2014, where If Then did not get into Best Musical, but Adina did get in for Leading Actress, so it might be a sure thing that she's getting in, but considering Death Becomes Her got mostly positive reviews, I'm not convinced that that's going to be Redwood's fate with positive reviews based on its California tryout. So let's see how audiences take to it, but I don't necessarily think fans coming out to support Adina equals Adina's definitely getting in for the Tony. Another new musical this season that's been top of mind for people is Maybe Happy Ending, which got nearly unanimous positive reviews from traditional publications. Maybe Happy Ending is a new musical with only four people in the cast. Helen J. Shen would be classified in leading actress in a musical. So if Maybe Happy Ending ends up staying open through June, it would be competitive to win Best Musical considering how well it did with critics. So if we see Maybe Happy Ending still open at Tony voting, that means it'll be competitive to win Best Musical, which means the chances of Helen J. Shen being nominated for her role would be strong. In that situation, I could see her getting into that fifth slot. I will present another scenario, which is the Betty Boop musical called Boop is opening this spring. Jasmine Amy Rogers is playing Betty Boop. Boop got mostly positive reviews from its Chicago run last year, but a theme I was seeing in reviews, even if they weren't 100% positive on the production, they were 100% positive with Jasmine Amy Rogers, who plays Boop. So I'm putting Jasmine and Helen kind of on the same footing in this scenario since they've both never been nominated before and they're young and they're both in new musicals. So we'll have to look at the narrative of what's competitive and best musical. Is it going to be Boop? Is it going to be Maybe Happy Ending? To see what's going to be more likely. Maybe Happy Ending is questionable financially to stay open till June. So if Maybe Happy Ending is closed by voting, Helen Jishan's not getting nominated. I did see Maybe Happy Ending in previews. I thought that the production and technical elements were the standout as well as the story. I thought the weaker part of it was the score and I thought the performances were just fine. When I think of the best of the year, the best of the season, the performances in Maybe Happy Ending aren't what come to mind. 
Meaning, I think that if maybe Happy Ending is still open come Tony nomination season, I think Helen J. Shen could be left off of that top five. Which brings me into Jasmine Amy Rogers could be getting in here if Boop is doing well, if Boop is looking to be competitive in Best Musical. Like I said, Boop got pretty positive reviews back in Chicago. Even for reviews that weren't 100% positive, people were 100% shouting out the performance of Jasmine Amy Rogers. So at this point, for number five, if we're between Adina, Helen, and Jasmine, I'm predicting Jasmine at this point. I I think Boop is going to do better than Redwood. I think Redwood will be forgotten and the Tony nominating committee might have a newbie, a younger newbie in that fifth slot since we already have so many legends. That's not a knock on Adina. That's just other productions that are more quality. There could be a world where Jennifer doesn't get in and we have Adina and Jasmine both in here. I'm liking putting Jennifer in here as co-leads for now with Jasmine in at five. I'm just not optimistic about Redwood, I guess, from what I've read about the California production and from what I've heard from the music of the show. Redwood's another show just like maybe Happy Ending where it's a smaller cast, smaller scale production. So let's see how it does, what the reviews are. I think something that could be in Redwood's favor is that it's opening in February whereas some of these other musicals are opening in April. So I think Redwood having its own opening date away from the spring crowdedness could make the show stand out in people's minds since it opened before all the craziness. Then again, that didn't help The Notebook last year when The Notebook opened before all of the March and April crowdedness. But just another thing to consider here. Everyone I've said so far are people that I think are the serious contenders, but we still have some people that could surprise us. So I'm going to talk through some other people that are going to be cycling around this conversation. We have Adrienne Warren for the last five years. She's a previous Tony nominee for a Tina of a Tina Turner musical. And we have the first ever Broadway revival of the last five years opening this spring. She's playing opposite Nick Jonas. This is being directed by Whitney White, who was nominated for Jaja's African Hair Breeding last season. So despite me being a little hesitant about the Nick Jonas casting, I'm quite intrigued by Adrienne's casting and by her voice. I think if the last five years ends up being well received and the Nick Jonas of it all is not a concern from people, I could see her getting in kind of like with Days of Wine and Roses last year where it was mainly two people in the show, Brian Darcy James and Kelly O'Hara, they both got in despite it being a smaller scale show. Not speaking about Nick Jonas at the moment, but Adrienne Warren, could we make room for her? The Tony committee does like her. I think at this point, I guess the reason I'm not as certain that she's a lock is since I don't know what, what scale the production is going to be. Is it going to be very small? with barely anything on stage where it's more just a cabaret or is it going to feel like a full production instead of just like a concert? I've never seen the last five years on stage. I've only seen the film. The reason I bring this up is because if Tony nominators see it and it feels more like a concert, kind of like Old Friends is a concert, like are they going to think that the performances are nomination worthy. So since I'm really not sure at this point what the level of production is for this revival, it's hard to tell if the performances are going to be in the Tony conversation, hence why I have her on the outskirts here of my top five conversation. Another question mark is Robin Herter for Smash. She's playing the character of Ivy in Smash. I have a few question marks about Smash. One is when I was gathering my thoughts for this video and I was on the Smash website, why does it say Smash a comedy about a musical. Like that's what it says when you Google this musical. It says smash on Broadway dash a comedy about a musical. But when I think about smash on NBC, I don't think of a comedy. I think of like a drama. I mean, looking back, it's funny, but at the time when I was tuning in every night in 2012 and 2013, I was not thinking it was a comedy. I was thinking this was serious drama. So the fact that it says comedy has me worried, kind of like what I was saying back at Death Becomes Her is I was apprehensive originally about having Megan in here because of the comedy of it all. After seeing it, I'm like, okay, this is a legit, should be taken seriously show. But basically, the fact that I'm already confused about the tone of Smash the Musical is a question mark. The fact that it's directed by Susan Stroman is a question mark. She directed New York, New York two Broadway seasons ago, which did not have positive... Tony fate or audience fate or critic fate and despite getting some Tony nominations it didn't win any. So the comedy about a musical I'm not sure about and the director I'm not convinced and so basically I think that Robin Herter could have a long road ahead. That being said we could all be wrong and Smash could be great with a talented cast and a strong story and score led by Robin Herter. I'm not convinced Smash is going to be a Tony darling or have a strong showing at nominations maybe with technical elements but right now I'm not optimistic about Robin Herter. Moving on to Real Women Have Curves, 
which is a new musical coming to Broadway in the spring. They haven't announced casting yet. It previously played in Boston, and the lead in Boston was Lucy Godinez. She plays the character that America Ferrera played in the film. So if Real Women Have Curves ends up being competitive with the Tonys, I would say Lucy Godinez gets that fifth slot for leading actress here. Maybe she would swap out with Jasmine if we're going with people who haven't gotten a nomination before battling it out for the fifth slot. Again, Jennifer Samard and Adina could both take this and it could be the case of everybody in this category has gotten a nomination before, plus Nicole. We'll see if this casting for Real Women Have Curves stays the same as Boston and we'll see how much of an impact this show has on audiences, critics, and the Tony nominators. We have some shows where I'm not convinced there's gonna be anyone for leading actress. Floyd Collins, Lizzie McAlpine's gonna be in the cast. I think she's gonna go featured. Pirates of Penzance, Jinx Monsoon, and Samantha Williams, I think would both be featured, not lead. Old Friends will probably all be featured. And then Buena Vista Social Club. It looks like the lead woman for Buena Vista Social Club is Natalie Venetia Belkin. She could be a lead. She's the first build on the Playbill listing, so I'm guessing she would be competitive in lead. I'm not familiar with the scope of this show or if this would be relevant in the Tony conversation, so until I learn more about it, I'm not going to move her up. I'm not predicting Sutton Foster for Once Upon a Mattress or Katie Braben for Tammy Faye, since those are both musical comedies that have closed. I'm not predicting the women from Wonderful World because they'll be classified as featured. Swept Away has no women in the cast. And then Operation Mincemeat, the lead actress in this is Natasha Hodgson. So let's keep an eye out on if US audiences like this UK musical comedy. Okay, let's go through my final predictions here. We have Audra at one, Nicole at two, Megan at three, Jennifer at four, and I'm gonna go with Jasmine at five. Let's see if Adina, Helen, Adrian, or Robin starts being competitive in that fourth or fifth slot. But for this round of my predictions, that's who I'm gonna go with for my top five. Tell me in the comments who you're predicting for this category and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.